All right, this video is going to review our infinite series tests. So throughout our book, we go through five series tests that were on your first quiz, and then we learn five more that are on your second quiz. And really, the thing is, even though in the first quiz you learned about those first five tests, it doesn't mean we don't talk about them again. It just means that now you have a bigger variety of tests to choose from. So what this video is going to do is going to take you through a section like you'll see on a quiz or on a chapter test, give you a bunch of different series, and ask the same thing. Does it converge or diverge? What test did you use? And what work helped you support what you think happened? And you will see with these that that's the way every test or quiz is going to be set up. You'll always have that section like this. Now on the AP test, what they do a little differently is a lot of times they will give you three series and just say, okay, which converges, which diverges. And a lot of times you've already kind of seen this. It'll say Roman numeral one or Roman numeral two, Roman numeral three, and then you pick. One thing that this is not asking you to do is actually to find the sum of the series because we know that can only be done with geometric and telescoping. So a lot of times once we've talked about those, you won't see a lot of future questions about that. So here we go on the first one. We want to figure out if this converges or diverges. Hopefully the first thing you think when you look at this one is this is a limit comparison. A lot of times when we have a polynomial over a polynomial, when the degrees are different but we can pick a comparison series and get the degrees to be the same when we do that limit comparison, that is when we do that. So we are going to compare this to the series 1 over n squared. And we know this is a converging p-series. And you always want to talk about what your comparison series does, because that's going to ultimately determine what the um, final answer is going to be. So now the limit comparison says, if we take the limit as we go to infinity of the original series divided by the comparison series, and instead of doing divided by, I'm going to do multiply by the reciprocal. If we are able to take this limit and we get a finite answer, and it doesn't matter what that finite answer is, in this case we get a half because we have an n to the fifth on top and a 2n to the fifth on the bottom. Any finite answer has to be positive as well, cannot get 0 as an answer, cannot get infinity as an answer, then that means that whatever our comparison series did, and we determined our comparison series converged, then the original series acts the same. So my conclusion is that my original series converges by limit comparison. You'll find that you use limit comparison a lot. Now, if you do a limit comparison and you get a limit that is zero or is infinity, oftentimes it doesn't mean you can't apply the, the test. It means that you compare it to the wrong thing. You want to make sure you compare it to something that you do get a finite limit when you do those limit guidelines. For the second one, um, whenever you have something to the nth power, the nth power, if it's not a basic geometric, and this is not a basic geometric because we have an nth power on top, but then we have a poly polynomial based piece on the bottom then we really want to look at a ratio test. Um, the, we have a root test, and that is great if everything is to the nth power, but since only the top is to the nth power, the rate root test isn't going to help us very much. Um, if we didn't have that exponential piece on top, we could do a limit comparison. If we didn't have the polynomial on the bottom, we could do a geometric. But when you have that mixture of the two, the ratio test is your best bet. Ratio test says if you take the limit as you go to infinity, of the n plus 1 form, which was going to give you 5 to the n plus 1 over n plus 1 plus 1, which will be n plus 2 squared, divided by the original form, which I always do multiply by the reciprocal. So multiply by the reciprocal of the original form of the series. Simplify that. So when you simplify 5 to the n plus 1 over 5 to the n, you end up with just a 5 on top. I can't do anything with the n plus 1 squared over the n plus 2 squared. But now I can take the limit because I can apply limit guidelines. I know the top is going to be a 5n squared if I multiply it out, and the bottom is just going to be an n squared if I multiply it by out, uh, out. So if I do my limit guidelines, I get 5. The conditions of the ratio test is when you do this process, if you get anything that is bigger then zero, in, or excuse me, bigger than one, including infinity, we say that it diverges by the ratio test. If you get anything that is less than one, it converges by the ratio test. So five is bigger than one, so that's usually the only thing I write. Therefore, my original series diverges by the ratio test. Again, the conditions of the ratio test, if you get a final answer that is bigger than 1, including infinity, it diverges. If you get an answer that is less than 1, it converges. If you actually get 1, it means the ratio test doesn't apply and you have to find a different test. 
So for the next one, I want to show you another way that a problem can be presented. Most problems are presented in sigma notation, like the two we just did, like the rest of them on the screen, other than the one we're getting ready to do. But sometimes they'll present it in more of a term-by-term -term form. You have to figure out what the series is first, and then you can apply the test. So what I see from my series is I always have a 2. And then on the bottom, I have n to the 1 third. I have 1 to the 1 third, which they don't even write because that's just 1, 2 to the 1 third, 3 to the 1 third. So this is 2 over n to the 1 third. I don't need to do any of the newer tests. This is just your basic p series. p is a third, which is less than 1. So we say that this is a diverging p series. I wanted to present one like that in the video just so you get accustomed to what if it's not in sigma notation? Can we actually look at it and determine what that notation is and then go and use one of the tests that you work with? You'll see a lot of p-series presented that way and you'll see a lot of geometric presented that way. We did a little bit of geometric on the last quiz. The next one, and actually this one and the one directly below it, first thing that should stick out is it is alternating. And when we have an alternating series, the first thing that we can do is the alternating series test. It's the test that applies automatically to something that alternates. What the alternating series test said is if you have decreasing terms, ignoring the alternating part, if you have decreasing terms, if your series is decreasing, and you get a limit that is zero, it will ultimately it will converge. If it's not decreasing or my limit isn't zero, it diverges. Now, do not get hung up on the whole decreasing piece because I've never seen a problem that doesn't present it as decreasing. What you really want to check with this is what happens if I take the limit as we go to infinity of everything that is not the alternating part. So ignoring what is alternating, ignoring the negative one to the n or the negative one to the n plus one, look at this limit. If you get zero, then we automatically can say, well, then it definitely converges by the alternating series test, or AST. If you get anything other than zero, like this one, we get a limit of a half. That is not zero. We can say that it diverges, but your reason actually isn't the alternating series test. This is my nth term test. It fails that alternating series test, but it uh, then falls into my nth term test. My nth term test said if I got a limit that was anything other than zero, then it, then it diverges. Now, we did talk in class, so we go through the idea of being absolutely convergent versus conditionally convergent. Um, absolutely convergent means, okay, if I take the absolute value and ignore the, um, the alternating piece, would it just converge on its own? And in this case, this one wouldn't. This is just divergent no matter what. Versus if you were doing one where you took the absolute value and say, yeah, you know what, it does converge. It, not only is the limit zero, but I can use one of my other tests to show that it does converge, then we call it absolutely. The AP test does not get very focused on absolutely versus, versus conditional. They are much more concerned with do you just understand that it converges, whether you're talking absolute or conditional. So the AST, the alternating series test, is looking at the limit and seeing does it go to zero to get it to converge. For the next one, uh, anytime you see factorial, the first thing you want to try is the ratio test. It works best with factorial. It works in a lot of other scenarios, too. So if we do our ratio test again, it said if we take our limit, as we go to infinity, of the n plus 1 term, so n plus 1 factorial over 2 times n plus 1 plus 1, divided by the original, so I always go to multiply by the reciprocal of the original, Simplify again. Factorials are usually pretty easy to simplify. n plus 1 factorial over n factorial leaves you with n plus 1. I can't do anything with the other stuff, so 2n plus 1. On the bottom, I might simplify this a little bit. If I distribute, I get 2n plus 2 plus another one, I get 2n plus 3. When I look at my limits, I have an n squared on the top. I have an n to the first power on the bottom. So that tells me since I have a bigger degree on top, I get an infinite answer, which is definitely bigger than 1. So this one diverges by the ratio test. Again, ratio test is using kind of 1 as that changing spot. If it's bigger than 1, including infinity, it diverges less than 1. It converges if it equals to 1. Test doesn't tell us anything. Last one is another alternating series, so I'm really going to treat it a lot like what happened up above, although you'll see something different happens as far as your final answer. Again, to be a convergent alternating series, it has to have decreasing terms, not something that you really need to write much with, but it also has to have terms that would go to zero as you take the limit. So you ignore the alternating piece. Say, okay, well, what happens to n over n cubed plus 4? Does it go to zero? It definitely does because I have a bigger degree on the bottom. So we would say that my series converges by the alternating series test. 
If you wanted to see does it converge absolutely, what that means is let's say that absolute, we take the absolute value and the alternating piece isn't there. So not thinking of it as an alternating series, just thinking of it as a series n over n cubed plus 4. If that converges using any of the tests that we've learned, then we say it's absolutely convergent. If it doesn't using any of the tests we've learned, then we say it is conditionally convergent. It still converges by the, abs uh, the alternating series test. This one, just to help your review process, this one would converge because this is a limit comparison. We can compare it to 1 over n squared which is a converging p-series. Since that converges, when I take the limit, I get a finite answer. Therefore, my original would converge. Now again, the question wasn't asking absolute or conditional. So the only thing you have to tell me is this right here, that you use the alternating series test and it converged. But just giving you some insight and some other terminology that you'll see. This is a good mix of questions. Uh, I didn't get into any that were geometric. We did that, so much of that in the last quiz. Uh, I didn't put a root test on here. I'll try to put a root one on one of the other videos. But at least gives you a, a lot of practice with your comparison tests and your ratio tests and, and your alternating series, which are the three main tests that we covered since the last quiz. And hopefully this helps you prepare.